The main page over here is kind of like a dashboard. It provides access to all the important performance controls to tweak a patch easily. And the controls here affect the entire patch, both layers A and B. Now to start with, we have the notes tab, which we've touched on before, and it provides access to the patch zoom. We can go in there and we can see info on the patches. We can go to the website and get legal info and go back out. And it also has the layers view. And this has an on and off button for each layer and a volume control for each layer. So it's great for simple tweaking and demoing the different layers and isolating them. And we have stepper buttons to go through the different waveforms or sound sources, depending what's loaded in. Now, it also provides access to the sound source browser with this little folder icon. And we've looked at that briefly. And it also has a sound source zoom. And we get to that with this. And there's an edit view over here with some various settings, which we're not going to look at right now. Just want to sort of give you an overview of this window. And then there's an info tab over here, which gives us info on the loaded sound source. And there's none loaded in right now. And I'll go back out. So that's the sound source browser versus the sound source zoom. Now, to start with, we have voices and octave settings here. And this controls the number of voices being used for this part. In this case, part one. And it's important to set it to where you need it, not too high, not too low. The higher it is, the more CPU it's going to use up. So don't put it all the way up to 64 if you don't need to. But also, you need to keep in mind the release envelope of sounds because sounds with long releases take up a voice, even though it might not be audible, it might be trailing away, it still counts as a voice. So set it where you need it. And this will transpose the entire patch. And if there's something loaded into another layer, it'll transpose that one as well. So for example, we'll use that and we'll use the stepper buttons. like that. We have scale tuning over here, and there's a variety of different scales that we can choose from. I'm going to leave it at Western, which is the regular equal temperament scale that we're used to working with in our music, but you can change the tuning of the instrument there. Clock speed is interesting. It allows you to play back anything that revolves around a clock, like an LFO or an envelope or arpeggiator. You can change the speed of it. Now, I've got a little project set up with some of the patches I want to use for this video, and I'm going to switch to another one called Name Check which is kind of an arpeggio type pattern. I'm just going to hold a note down and you'll hear it. So it uses the arpeggiator. And if I go to halftime, it'll be in halftime. Let's do this with a little drum loop so you can hear it. I'll go back to normal time. You can really feel the pulse change. And now halftime. Double time. And triple. Etc. So you can get not just duple divisions, but also triplet based divisions. So very useful for clock based effects like LFOs, envelopes, and arpeggiator patterns. Now, the latch and trigger modes are interesting. This works in conjunction with live mode and stack mode, which we'll look at later in this series. But to give you an idea, what it means is that when you're playing a note and you press latch, the note will continue to be held once you release your finger from the keyboard. Now, you can see the notes I'm playing here on the keyboard. So I'll play a note and I'll take my finger off and it stops. But if I put latch on, it'll continue. So it continues playing until latch is disabled. And we also have trigger mode, which means that when the sequencer is playing, when you play a note, you can have it trigger either immediately when you play the note on the keyboard, which is the default setting, or the next 16th note, next beat, or next bar. So for example, I'll have that drum groove playing, and you can see here where I'm hitting my note, but you'll hear that it'll only start triggering on the next beat. And similarly, I can have it only start the next bar. So very useful to know about. We have a gain control and that offsets the entire part. And we can set 
the MIDI channel for the part. We can do it here, either 1 to 16 or anything in between. And we can also set the outputs. If you're using a multiple output instance of Omnisphere in your DAW, you can set the output there. But that's also available in this mixer page. We have the MIDI channels over here and the output settings for each part. And they default to 1 through 8 sequentially, but they can be changed if necessary. But back to part 1. We have the overall part level, which we can adjust here. And we have velocity curves. And this is interesting. This affects the weighting of the keyboard and how it affects and triggers the sound. So we have different velocity curves that we can choose from. It's a, a playing style, how you feel comfortable playing your keyboard. But to get more detailed, we have a velocity zoom over here. And when we go in, we can really tweak the scaling. Now, it's global to the part, and it applies to both layers. And the amount applied to each layer can be controlled separately with these controls here. Now, we have a drop-down menu where we can copy and paste velocity curves or save them if you want to build up a library of settings you like. But the idea is like this. We have the curve display. And we have a little dot here. We can change the shape of the curve. And again, this is all relating to velocity weighting. We have a slope slider at the bottom. So this will change the slope of the weighting of the velocity. And then we have a global offset to just globally offset it. So you can really control the feel of how the patch feels or the part feels when you play it. So these over here determine how much of the velocity weighting is going to apply to the amp envelope and how much to the filter envelope, because often we route filter control to be controlled by velocity. So this can affect it separately for layer A and layer B, and you can turn it on and off for each of them individually. So that's the velocity zoom. I'm going to end off here, and we'll continue in the next video and look at the solo and glide modes and the other settings on this page.